First, we'll create a deintersection animation for our petals. Second, we'll sequence three animations, the deintersection, the closing, and the opening of the flower. Third, we'll run the animation through a vellum simulation. In the end, we'll do some small fixes and edits throughout the setup. So I'll just add two nulls here. We'll say out bud pose. And on this other one, we will say out bloomed pose. I will take this out bloomed pose and add a rig pose. Now we want each of these petals to just move a little bit away from each other so that we can move them back in towards their current position before the simulation starts. So we're gonna add a transformation here and say it's on the root group. And now you can see if we translate it in Y, each of these petals start to move away from each other. And we want these innermost flowers to be closer to their initial position than the further away flower. So we're just going to ramp our U attribute with an attribute adjust float. And we'll just name this mask and we will set always and remap attribute. We will remap the U attribute. Now if we drop down a skeleton blend, put this rig pose in the first input and the adjust float in the second input. And if we change this blend masking to set from attribute and make sure that this is set to mask, then we saw that these bottommost points actually came in towards the shape and we want it to be the opposite. So we're gonna say the source range is from one to zero instead. And now these innermost parts of the skeleton are closer towards their original shape than the outermost. And we probably just wanna change this max value a little bit to get them a bit further away. So they're affected more by this D intersection. It looks like they're still a little bit close, so I'm gonna to try to translate them in X a little bit. Now, in some cases, like down here, it can also be beneficial to rotate the shape a little bit. So we'll take this Z value here, just rotate it up. We wanna blend between this shape here and the end of this animation here. So I'll grab this out deform pose in another object merge. We'll drop down a time shift. This time shift will set to frame $F start. So the first frame of our timeline here. And the second time shift will set to $F end. So the end of our timeline. I'll name this skeleton blend flower D intersected. And then I'll add another skeleton blend. And we'll just move this section here over on the right. Start frame and end frame. And I will put this end frame into that input bar there. And the D intersected flower into the first input. Now we can blend between these two. And we could keyframe this, but that's a lot of numbers to keep track of in the end. So we'll add an attribute wrangle up here and we'll name it time management. And on this wrangle, we're going to add three channels. So we'll take three integers from over here and we'll name them D intersection length, flower close length and flower bloom length. And I'll just set these ranges here to something I think makes sense. And these are some values I've used for a previous flower. I'm just gonna put them in for now and we'll see if they work for this setup as well. I will drop down a wrangle and we're going to use a trick that we used up here in the growth animation, which is this expression here, fit f at frame. So I'm just going to copy that and put it in here. And this time we'll say f at mask is equal to this expression here. And we'll just change this 48 to a channel, an integer channel, CHI, and we'll call it the intersection length and add that. So we'll make a relative reference between this time management, the intersection length and this the intersection length here. And while we're at it, we're going to do the same thing for this flower bloom length and the growth animation up here. So we'll change this to CHI flower bloom length and we'll add the parameter and we'll paste the relative reference in there. So if you click this, you can see that this is now 350, just like our wrangle here says it should be. And in this skeleton blend, we'll go back to set from attribute and we'll say mask from first input. And we just need to increase our frame length now because now we set this to be 350 frames. So we'll set that to 350 as well. So we see in the first 24 frames, this flower settles into its place. So we'll name this to D intersection animation. Now we're gonna do the same thing, except we're going to close the flower. So we'll add a skeleton blend and we're going to blend between the end frame in the first input and the start frame in the second input. 
and we're going to take this mask wrangle here and copy it over into this first input and again we'll set this blend masking to set from attribute an attribute called mask from the first input we just need to update this the intersection length here to be the flower close Link. And we can delete this de intersection length parameter by right clicking, going to more and delete spare parameters and click delete. We'll go to time management and we'll copy our flower close length paste relative reference. So now it's within the first 42 frames. So I'll just take this flower opening animation here and copying it down here just for clarity's sake. And I'll just name that to flower open animation. So now we have these three separate animations that all start at frame one and go forward the length that we've defined in this time management. And for the vellum simulation, we just want to play these one at a time. So we want to play this de intersection animation first, then the flower close animation, and then the flower open animation. You can drop down a motion clip, which is the KinFX way of doing this type of thing. So if we drop down a motion clip for both of these, and then a motion clip sequence, you can get the first motion clip and the second motion clip, and then we'll drop down a motion clip evaluate. And now these two play in sequence after each other. You can do it this way. I think it's a little bit too slow the way it has to convert it to a motion clip and then back and forth. So I've made my own version of this. We're going to take a quick look at this, but otherwise you can just download the project files and you can have a deeper look into it if you need that. So we'll drop down this DL merge animation sequences. And if I put this D intersection animation and the flower close animation into this, and I change the shift frame to this D intersection length, we can see that it does exactly the same thing, except there was no waiting for a conversion to a motion clip. So if we click allow editing of contents and we open it up, it's basically just a switch that uses this shift frame, shifts it out with a null, and then it's another switch that has a time shifted version of the second input and switches it out with a null. And then we merge them together, this amount of frames after the other. So I'll leave this unlocked so it's there for you in the downloads, and I'll delete this motion clip stuff that I tried to show. And now we'll take this merge animation sequences and we'll put the output of the first one into the second one, and we'll put this flower open animation into the second input. And this time we need to take the flower close length and just add it on top of what we already have here. So we'll type plus and paste relative reference. So the expression now adds the two lengths together and we get 66. So after 66 frames, we're going to start playing our flower open animation. And now we have these animations playing out in sequence. We just want to take this petal animation sequence here and change this input into our bone deform with our petal animation sequence. So we get the full animation sequence. So I got an error from my for each loop here in the first 24 frames because we don't have a petal num attribute on the primitives on this D intersection. So we'll just copy this attribute promote over into that stream and that should fix it. I just went ahead and created an out null and an object merge. So these two are the same. Now we're going to prepare this for a vellum simulation. So we need to set a couple of attributes. I'll just do this in a wrangle. You might remember from the first tutorial, we created a bottom group. So we're going to select that in the group field here on the wrangle. And we'll set these two attributes. I at disable external is equal to one. And I at disable self is equal to one. These two attributes just turn off collisions. So this one turns off external collisions and this one turns off self collisions. Then we'll create a vellum configure cloth. And in this pin to animation, we'll set bottom group and we'll set it to match animation. Under the stretch and damping ratio, make it 10 times stronger. And under the bend damping ratio, we'll make it five times stronger. Then I'll add a vellum constraint. The constraint type should be set to pin to target. We'll set the pin type to soft and match animation. I'll set the stiffness to a value of 0.1 and the bend stiffness to 0.001. Then I'll drop down a vellum solver. And under forces, I'll just turn off gravity. Playing this simulation, we see that we get these very wrinkly petals when their size decreases for the butt pose. To fix that, we need to go into the vellum solver and add a vellum rest blend. We'll plug this into the force. We'll set the update frequency to each frame and we'll set these two constraint groups to stretch and bend. We'll set the source to SOP and now it's asking for a SOP to refer to. So we'll go back out here and we'll just name this vellum cloth something that's easier to find. So we'll start with capitals, name it vellum, initialize cloth. We'll go back in and in the subfield, we'll find our vellum initialize cloth here at the top. 
And I find that giving this blend value a slightly lower value like 0.2 gives a bit more natural results in the simulation. Now, if we play it again, this is a much better result. Looking at the attribute spreadsheet, I filtered for the attribute called growth. And we can see that even though some of these petals have started growing, the growth value is zero on all of the points. So that's because it's not being transferred through the vellum solver. It just takes the first frame input for this growth value, and it doesn't actually update it frame by frame. So we'll go into the vellum solver and we'll add a geometry wrangle. Under the inputs, we can refer to our SOP called vellum initialize cloth again, and we'll write this brief expression saying f at growth is equal to point, and we'll say input number one, that's the first argument. Then we'll write a string saying growth, that's the name of the attribute that we want to get. And then we'll say i at pt num because we just want to copy it from the same point number. And now playing the simulation again, we can see that it worked. We have some values that are above one. Now I'll drop down an attribute delete. We'll set this delete non-selected and we'll delete all the attributes except for growth, UV and petal num. We'll also add a group delete and we'll delete this vellum object and stream default source. Then I'll add a poly soup node. If we then add a file cache, just name this flower sim. Here where we do our posing with the butt pose and the fill axis points, we want to add a transform node because we'd like to be able to scale these fill axis points to be closer together when they're not bloomed. So if I set this scale y to be 0.3, we can see that this flattens the entire thing and we don't really want that. It happens because this attributes parameter picks up the transform attribute. And if we set this to only be the p attribute instead, it doesn't happen anymore. We're going to add a bit more detail to the geometry before feeding it into the vellum sim. So first we'll subdivide. Because we're dealing with triangles, we want to set this algorithm to open subdiv loop. We'll make an attribute vop to do some noise operations on this surface. We want to get a vertex attribute with this import vertex attribute. We'll set the input to first input and we'll set the attribute to UV. If we output that to the color, we can see that that works. Create a vector to float. Now we've broken this UV out into its three components. So we'll take the Y component and we'll run a ramp parameter over that. We'll change it to a spline ramp and we'll name it to vertical mask. Again, we can check that that worked by putting it into the color. Then we'll create a turbulent noise and we'll set the UV attribute to the position. We'll change the type to simplex noise. And if you middle mouse on any of these inputs here, we can promote them to parameters. So we'll do that with all of these. We'll also change the signature to a 3D noise. Then we'll create an add node and we'll add the P attribute and this turbulent noise together and output that as P. So we'll use a bind node to bring in our U attribute and we'll just add that U attribute to our UV coordinates. And maybe we'll just multiply constant this U attribute by something like 50. So now it's different per petal. Before going into this add here, we just want to multiply by this vertical mass that we created before. And we'll do another bind node because we also want to multiply it by our growth attribute. So we'll multiply our mask by this growth attribute. And now I'll go through and adjust these parameters to something that sort of makes sense. We'll add another attribute vop and in this attribute vop we want to create a ramp that goes along the length of the petal that describes how strong this pin constraint is so we already did that up here so we'll take these three nodes and just copy and paste we'll create a bind export to create an attribute from this ramp and we'll name it stretch stiffness Then we'll go on this vellum constraints node change the stiffness to scale by attribute and it's already set to stretch stiffness if we visualize our new attribute we'll see that the stiffness is stronger towards the end of the petals and that doesn't seem quite right to me so i'm just going to flip this we should just take this noise vop and put it down below our sim cache as well along with another subdivide node we should also keep the point attribute called center mask. We should also add a little bit of wind into the vellum sim. So we'll just dive into the vellum solver and add a pop wind. I'll set this amplitude to one and the swirl size to 1.3 and add an expression that says amp. That's this amplitude up here times equals F at growth. 
Here where we're creating our petal surface, I just noticed that on this fuse node, we're actually messing up the UVs. So to fix that, we're going to add an attribute transfer. And the first input will be the fuse node. And the second input will be this distance along geometry. Then if we disable points and primitives and enable vertices and write UV in this field, you can see that the UVs look much nicer now. At this point, the entire setup works, but the flower I've made here isn't very interesting. In the next video, we'll use this setup to model a flower from reference. If we have time, we'll also look at the shading and rendering in Karma as well.